The narrative of Native American life has taken many shapes, often focusing, or sorry, rather with a focus on defeat and tragedy. But as Jeffrey Brown tells us now, a new work of history urges us to see a more complex and living culture, part of our Canvas series on arts and culture. December 29, 1890. U.S. Army soldiers killed more than 150 Lakota Indians, perhaps even twice that many, more than half of them women and children. The Wounded Knee Massacre marked the end of the war against the Plains Indians and more broadly became a symbol of the end of an entire culture. The number one story, the dominant narrative about American Indian people is that we were once great and we are great no more. Mm -hmm. And if there's a history written about us, history is only that which we have endured and maybe somehow survived. And nowhere in those accounts does it suggest that we are actors in our own lives. David Troyer, an Ojibwe, grew up on the Leech Lake Reservation in northern Minnesota. His mother, a native, who became a lawyer and tribal court judge. His father, a Jewish immigrant who'd escaped the Holocaust and taught on the reservation. In college in the 1980s, he read D. Brown's Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. First published in 1970, a best-selling and hugely influential book on American Indian history. On one hand, when I read it in college, I was incredibly happy to be noticed in, in a book. A book was concerned about me and my life and my tribe, my family, um, it, indirectly. Yeah. And so I felt, I felt elevated and I felt, I felt respected on one hand, and then on the other hand I felt completely silenced and gagged. Because? Because on the very first page of that book he says something to the effect of, I start in 1860 and I end in 1890 at the massacre at Wounded Knee, and now I'm quoting, where the culture and civilization of the American Indian was destroyed. Right. Full the, stop. The end. The end. Now Troyer, author of five previous books, has written The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee. Native America from 1890 to the present, telling the story of a changing and living Indian culture. I think we often get ourselves wrong. Growing up, I kind of bought that story about us too. I saw the place I was from as, as a no place where nothing happened, nothing good anyway, and I couldn't wait to get out. I bought that story too for a period of my life, and this book is also my attempt to try and see my own life differently, to see the life of, of the people I love differently, and to provide an alternative for us as well. So it's not just for non-Native people, it's for Native people too. Did you know the history yourself? Was it something you had to discover? Some. I don't start any project knowing everything. I start every project because I know next to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew where to look, and I knew who to talk to. And I, I get asked often, surprisingly, mm -hmm. questions like, well, what's Native American life like? And my response is, well, what's white life like? You can't answer it. It's an impossible question to answer. Yeah. And my point is always, there's no such thing as Native American life. There's only Native American lives. And that's one thing that at least I hope the book communicates is the radical diversity. We had diversity before Europeans came here. We, we kept it. Astounding diversity. Right? right. And we kept it during the process of colonization, mm -hmm. and we have it today, not just between or tribes, but among tribes. Troyer tells of reservation life and urban migration, economic change, and political movements, aiming for a more nuanced approach. One example, the forced removal of young natives from their homes to attend boarding schools. Kids were prevented from speaking their languages. They were punished for practicing their religions. They were forcibly Christianized. Those things were painful. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you took all these native kids from all these different tribes spread across the country, you shoved them in school together, and these kids formed relationships and friendships, romantic relationships, networks, and then they carried those out into the world when they left school. So if you told the story of boarding schools as only a tragedy, mm -hmm. well, you would miss quite a bit. You'd miss a lot. So yeah, I'm not interested in the tragic narrative. I'm not interested in a story of hope. I'm interested in a story of complexity and depth. Why is that the narrative? Why does that continue? I think it's a way of dealing with national guilt. Um, I think, you know, America always takes her own temperature by, by looking at what it thinks of as the Native American corpse. But the fact is, we're still alive and we're doing much more than suffering. In many ways, Native lives are hard. We suffer from access to health, to education, to capital, to credit, to power. So all those things are real problems, for sure. But you know, we're more than just a sum of a number of conditions. We're more than just a collection of problems. But people don't really tune into that all that often. Okay. 
There are new voices emerging to tell their own Native American stories, including writers Tommy Orange, We Are Not Inferior, and Mary Catherine Nagel, recently profiled on the NewsHour. Troyer ends his book with a chapter titled Digital Indians. It is so important. And with us raised recent political progress, such as the election of the first two Native American women to Congress, including Sharice Davis of Kansas. Someone asked me recently if Sharice Davis was proof that there's hope for Native people. And I said, OK, sure, it's good for Native people. I said, but I'm more excited for all the people of Kansas. She, as a Native American woman, understands what it means to be on the pointy end of policy. She knows what structural inequality does to a community and to people as a Native American woman. And let's face it, middle America, many millions of Americans living in what coastal people think of as flyover states, increasingly suffer from the same problems. Who better to lead middle America than a Native American woman? So I'm not just happy for Native people, I'm happy for Kansans. Mm -hmm. I think they're lucky to have her. Okay, the heartbeat of wounded knee, David Troyer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.